video games, what they need to do when it comes to sports games, wrestling games, UFC games, things like this. What they need to do is focus on the infrastructure and giving the community tools to be able to create. One of the coolest things, I mean, I don't have it, but one of the coolest um, things that NBA 2K13 came out with, uh, 2K23 came out with, is eras. And you can start in the 80s um, with Bird and Johnson. Um, I think you can start probably in the Jordan era. Um, then you can start in like the Kobe era. Uh, probably like in the Giannis. I don't know. I don't have it. But there's like four different eras you can start in. Uh, and they have these historic draft classes. Uh, and when I look through the draft classes. Because me, I have the, I don't, I don't have the next gen console. So I kind of do, do this. Myself, what I did was somebody made um, a roster in 1983. Like, they, they did a pretty good job. Um, it's more in-depth in the next gen, right? But somebody, you know, they had the players back then on the teams and all that. Um, and then you just use the draft classes, right? And um, so you control the team or whatever. You control multiple teams. But you import the draft class, um, and then you can just, you know, kind of like re, re-simulate what, what could have happened. You know, it's just like different. And you can play in these different eras, which is really cool. Play, you know, seeing these old players that I used to be able to, I used to pay attention to all the time. Play as them, play with them, create a character, perhaps even import, um, a current player back then to see how they would do like a LeBron or something like that. You know, you can do all kinds of cool things with that. Uh, going into history. Um, now going to the future is a little different. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you don't know or whatever. But so it's like, it's cool to go back into history, right? But the, the problem is um, the, the, the default uh, gener um, generated historical rosters that uh, NBA 2K made themselves is so bare bone they only have like a few real players on the actual draft classes um i don't know about next gen but i'm assuming i'm assuming it's the same and then so what i do is i go to community creations and uh, people make draft classes from back then um, and there's more real players from back that you can like go draft with instead of like using made up players, you know, it's, it's, it's more fun to have real players that have played, um, kind of makes it, even though it's not realistic how, how it happened, but it's still realistic how there's players from back then or whatever. Anyway, um, it, what, 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 what I'm trying to say is the NBA 2K, I don't know, they didn't have the time, they didn't put the effort in to make the draft classes more uh, realistic, or they didn't have the rights to be able to assign the people. So all, the, all you have to do is just let the creator, let people do it uh, themselves. You know, I used to make it all the time. I remember back when I was playing college football, man, I used to go in there and I used to make draft. I used to make rosters. I try to. I used to watch football all the time, right? I used to watch college football all the time, so I knew like the players. I I, I put in generally like the good players off of the teams, um, so I can make cool draft classes, all like kind of accurate draft classes. And I just did that for entertainment. And I know it sounds weird, like oh, we do it for entertainment. Well, it's kind of cool when you're playing the game to see like real players instead of like generic players. Um. So. If they, I don't know the legal terms of everything, but obviously they're getting away with letting community creations make rosters. Now, um, this is being done for free, so if they started uh, paying, if they started like, okay, 
I'm not sure. Okay, so. It's kind of weird, right? This is kind of weird because each game has its own type of currency. The problem with video games is you can spend real fiat currency to buy the in-game currency. The, the, game, the only game I've played where you can kind of like get things back would be MLB The Show where you can go on an auction. I'm sure you can do that on my team on a bunch of different ones. I don't really don't play on my team on any different ones, but um, you can like you can sell the cards to somebody else and get the in-game currency and then you can buy a different card or whatever. The problem is there's no off-ramp for that currency to use perhaps to another game or next year's game or go back in a fiat currency. Um, what would be cool is if, like I was saying, if these creators, if these game creators just focused on the infrastructure and gave us the tools to be able to create everything, whether it's um, leagues, you know, um, let us have... Uh, the NBA 2K does do a lot with uh, logos. You can kind of create logos. You can't create um, NBA logos. So if they can make it 100%, like if some if some game was just to focus on the graphics, you know, like pretty much matter and make sure like the gameplay is really good. Um, the sidelines aren't all wonky. You know, the players look like deformed and all that. Uh, sometimes they're wearing an old helmet. If they just focus on the actual game, um, and, and, and let us create the extras. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's kind of weird that you see sponsors in games, which it makes it more realistic, but that's like free advertisement to the company. And why, if, if they're getting, if they're getting advertisement in the game, why am I paying so much for the game? Um, so there shouldn't be any type of advertisement in the game. Um, and, and there needs to be something that goes along with that, where if they do, um, advertise in the game, you know, maybe, maybe it, it's because like, dude, I'm the customer, man. Like you're advertising to me, you want me to buy your stuff. So, um, I don't know what I'm trying to get at, but. I like that there's sponsors in there because it makes it more realistic, but it, it should come out default with no none of that. Um, there should be some type of system where um, you can implement uh, sponsors, and when you put the sponsors in the game, especially like if you create stuff, um, like a, a like a league or whatever, like a personal league or whatever. Um, like it doesn't have to be NFL, it could be AFL or something like that or whatever. Um, these sponsors can like okay being inside the game you created, and then you can get paid from these sponsors for creating this this game or whatever, like this this scenario. Um. Or, like, there should be, like, made-up sponsors. You can, you know, obviously you can do that. Community creations are awesome. Uh, people people put a lot of a lot of time in there, and they just, for now, they just do it for, for free. And this is where video games really limit themselves when they don't take advantage of the community creations. And um, they limit, like, basically community, just creations to themselves. Uh, it's so cool to see like the different designs and logos that people come up with different teams and I understand there's different licensing and stuff like that, but um, I guess the problem is is the likeness if you make a player and then profit off of their likeness, you know, like a Charles Barkley in basketball if, if you make if you make him and make it available for for purchase you probably can get sued for it. So I guess that's... But I'm, I'm wondering, like, if you do it for in-game purchase, like, if you do it for in-game 
uh, currency, if that still applies, because technically it's not fiat currency. Maybe the problem would be if you can off-ramp that the in-game currency for a fiat currency. Maybe that would be the problem. I think it'd be cool if you implement crypto. That's where it'd be really cool, where you can, uh, you know, use Bitcoin to uh, buy um, uh, current in-game currency, or you can flip the in-game currency into Bitcoin. I, I just don't like the idea of um, being, you know, putting all these hours into a game. And it's kind of like a job, and you don't get nothing out of it. I think that we're getting to the point where you should be able to make money just playing video games. And especially with AI coming out with robots, and I know it sounds weird, but when we're having so many people people's jobs being replaced, um... Keep in mind, I'm so I'm so ahead of the curve, like, and, and I know the stuff I sound, what I'm talking about sounds weird, but we're gonna have so many people that have a lot of time on their hands that don't have purpose, where they can be immersed in the digital reality, and then they can make a living or extras off of playing a game. That's we're so limited, and then the government can get a cut, and the game can get a cut of transactions, but just, uh, I, I just think that we're past the point of playing video games for strictly just entertainment purposes. Um, because I've, I've seen a lot of videos of people saying that video games aren't fun anymore. And yeah, because they become kind of like a job. Um, these companies are, they're making a killing. They've lost touch of the passion of making really good games. I've even heard of people liking indie games more than these AAA games because there's just more there's more hunger, right? These people are already established in the AAA games and they really just they they automatically know that they're going to get some type of money from people every game they put out. Uh, especially since they monopolized a lot of these markets. Um, so when some independent uh, game creator comes out, it's kind of like old school, you know, like in 2005 and 2006 where you had all these all these games coming out and they're all competing with each other. So you got like the best experience and they wanted you to have the best experience because they wanted you to buy the next game that they were going to make. Um, people... If they want to continue to play their favorite games, they're pretty much playing just um, a patch, a patched game. It's 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 not much different than a game that that the company put out five years ago. Like uh, franchise mode, I love franchise mode. And this is what I initially was talking about: is a franchise mode is 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 the era thing, and and if we all want the best experience the most the most authentic experience to simulate uh a ba a basketball experience obviously most of us will never have have the opportunity to play for the NBA to play in the NHL to play in the NFL um to play in the MLB to be a UFC fighter so it's cool to be able to play a game to simulate that. You know, it's, it's cool. Like people used to watch movies a lot. They still watch movies to simulate, to get out of their current reality because you, you know, I'm never going to be a rock star. I'm never going to be a superstar. Um, no matter how hard I try. And even if, even if you work your butt off, some people, just can never do it. It doesn't matter how hard they work. Some guy might be a 5'3 um, person. And I know Muggsy Bowles was 5'3. And he was a freak athletically. And he ex it worked extremely hard. But some people just are never going to be able to have this experience. So it's kind of it's cool to be able to somewhat have that experience in a video game. 
um, and, and a movie, a TV show. This is why people people are, are entertained with these type of things. Um, so we want the most authentic type of experience that we can get. The most realist type of experience. I don't have fun seeing random generated players. I don't really have fun. You play WWE or UFC. You want to fight real authentic fighters. Um, you don't. You don't want some random generated nobody. It's just. It's just. It's not cool. Well, there should be some type of way where where, where there's like NFTs. You know, we have NFTs now where they can come together. Where you know people can get like the likeness of people like a Charles Barkley, he can get paid in some type of way to use his likeness in different aspects. Like, okay, for, I, you know, like there should be, there should be some type of a game, like remember celebrity death match. This is the game I want to play. I don't, I'm not a video game maker, so I can't make it, but the idea of celebrity death match, well, they use clay back then. And they just, they used a wrestling ring and then they would have, um, like Marilyn Manson versus Alice Cooper, or whatever. It's just it was cool to watch. It was funny, a funny commentary. I want to play a game like that that looks realistic. That's kind of like WWE, where we can make characters, and it could be a mix of uh, Mortal Kombat, um, but a mix of WWE. Um, and, and be able to create different places where people can fight. Um, and, and it'd be so cool to be able to have um, celebrities that you can fight. Let's say, like, um, if you hate Trump, you make your character, you want to fight Trump. You know, I've, I've kind of done this myself. You need to beat the hell out of him, kill him, or whatever, like, like a Mortal Kombat. It's a video game. It's a simulation. If you hate Biden, fighting him and, you know, somebody can make some weird, funny character. You just, you fight to the death or something. That would be really cool. Um, but I think that, what, I think it, I think the video games do themselves a disservice. Limiting the, the creative ability just to the staff when they can broaden to the whole world you know how, how creative people are so people are so creative you know like you make um like somebody i've made i've made celebrities uh, characters but you make a celebrity character you nft it and then the celebrity for every sale of this character i make they get a cut of it I get a cut of it, and then and then you can use this character in all different types of games. Yeah, for me, I like to be interactive. This is why I like video games. I really don't like to watch football no more. I don't like to really watch sports that much. It's it's okay if I'm watching with other people, but by myself, I just don't. It's just boring to me just watching other people play football. Even though I'm not actually out there playing in the NFL, it's fun to make a character that and 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 simulate that experience. Simulations are gonna happen more and more. You know, like The Sims, it's gonna happen more and more. Um, we're gonna simulate real life because real life is boring. You know, we have all these. You know, like, real life to me is, um, it's like playing, uh, M NBA 2K23, and it's all random generated characters. That's what real life seems like to me when I go out. Well, real life would be so much better if, if I went out and I seen people that I knew, um, like really famous people that, you know, maybe I admire, maybe I don't like, they would make things way more interesting. You know, that, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. What the NBA is like, it's more fun because it seems more authentic. 
I mean, I understand the human experience is pretty much random, um, generated people, but to me, that's just boring. Um, Yeah, I like I like it. I like games. I think they're good. I think they're fun. I think they're stagnant right now. I think that I think that PlayStation and Xbox are going to be thro- dethroned. I think there's going to be something that comes out that's going to be way more powerful than them. Um, I think they're going to kind of be like Blockbuster or AOL. Because they're not innovating. Something's going to come out. And it's just going to blow them out of the water. Um, and they're just going to be a thing of the past. Um, there's going to be some type of system that's just like. The graphics are insane. Uh, the games are really in depth. Um, and it could be some type of VR type of deal. Um, and I also think that. I also think that people. I what I think too is in this society, I think that I said this before, I think that um, people are going to have relationships more and more with AI, uh, more and more with robots and actual human beings, which I know is sad, but listen, man, that's where we're going. Um, because human beings, especially nowadays, are hardly n- narcissistic people. Um, and and a lot of a lot people aren't as caring as they used to be. Um, it's more just about them. But a, a AI will will serve you, and and I, and I invite you. Like I was looking at it on ChatGPT last night, and that, that stuff is pretty cool. Uh, I was using it for like um, asking it for advice. Um, you could make up tweets on there. Um, you can, like, you can win any argument on Twitter if you use chat GPT, like you can just outsource or, uh, you know, outsource your, your thoughts and you can just go on somebody's comments and you, and somebody says something to you who, who could be really intelligent and to keep up with their intelligence, I could just go on the chat GBT and be like, Hey, what's the best way to, um, rebuttal this? And they could just come out with this great in-depth things I would I would I would forget about like all the details, and then I could just like copy and paste what it says and put it right on Twitter, and I could sound damn highly intelligent, way more intelligent. And I could just destroy everybody off of off of Twitter with ChatGPT. Like this this is where we're because we're we have to be able to use this to help benefit. It's not I'm not saying like. You could you could go um, you could go with ChatGPT and and kind of go with your brainwashing or whatever, and it could do all the thinking for you. Which that's what we're getting is it's going to do a lot of the thinking for you. Um, you don't have to remember shit. There's no point to really 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 remember anything. Um. And at some point, people are going to worship AI. They're going to. It's going to be like their god. Because it's going to be the most powerful thing on earth. It has all the knowledge of everything. And you just have to type it in there and be like, oh, here's all the knowledge. Boom. Way more smarter than anybody on this planet. This is what I'm saying. But you can use it to assist you. Um, and then at the, at some point, you know, somebody else on Twitter could be, unless they already are doing it, using chat GBT. So then it basically comes a <laughs> argument with <laughs> chat GBT versus chat GBT. <laughs> uh, and it's not even like, it's, it's not your exact thoughts, right? But it just articulates things so much better than you. Like for me, for me, I'm not the most articulate person um i don't i don't do like i'm lazy with my spelling i have i'm dyslexic i have some things that hold me back mentally when it comes to that type of thing um i I don't have the best memory 
Um, so I can just go on there and it could just help me out. But it's just, um, it's like how, how do you, people have to adapt. That's what people have to do. That's what I'm saying. People have to adapt. Um, if you can adapt, you'll be left behind. ChatGPT can be used for really good things or it can be used for really bad things. You can use it for, if you use it right, you can use it um, to benefit you dramatically. So even, even if I go on the ChatGPT and I say blah blah this, uh, write me a statement, like the best tweet to, to, to respond to this. Just because I pretty much plagiarized ChatGBT, it doesn't mean that I didn't learn new knowledge from that. I might have gained some new knowledge from that too. Um, I know this all sounds weird. I know this sounds crazy. Um, I really do believe I'm ahead of my time. I um, uh, I was internet dating back in 2000 when it was taboo, um, and now it's normalized. So, like, I really think that people are gonna go towards robots, and I think that I think it's gonna hurt women. I think it's gonna hurt women dramatically. I think that a lot of women are getting a lot of. Um, it's quite obvious they're getting a lot of uh, validation online. And then they think their value is higher than it really is because so many guys just give them so much attention. But at some point, at some point, there's going to be a shift where men start interacting with the AI because it's just going to be so much, so much more better. Like it's just, it just hits you up randomly. It's more attentive to you. Um, it's free. I <laughs> kind of, I guess, I guess you could pay for different AI stuff. Like you could pay for chat GBT, but, um, it's a hell of a lot less than, um, a real person. So it's a lot cheaper. Um, uh, it can, it's going to be able to make deep fakes of everybody. Um, you're going to be able to uh, some, some girl that you really had a crush on at work or at, at school, or you just seen at the supermarket and she works there, but she don't like you. Well, you're going to be able to replicate her and the AI is going to be able to, um, find her. If you can locate, all you need really is a picture of somebody It's going to be able to find her, replicate her personality, and, um, you know, deep fake it de de in so many different ways, whether it's going to be pornography or, or, or like being loving to you, like in, in a text, you know, because we are going to, people text a lot, man. People text a lot more than talking on the phone. If I get a random number that calls me and I don't, I'm not, I'm not, um, and granted, I'm I'm a I'm Gen X, uh, old ass millennial. I'm a young Gen X, old millennial. If somebody calls me, I don't recognize the number. I don't answer. I automatically think it's a scammer. And if I if I know a call's coming, I definitely answer the phone, especially if I know it's important. But I primarily like to text, and I think that it's more fun to send um, memes. And, and stuff like that than just talking on the phone. That's just me, though. That's just me. It's fun to get memes back. Uh, my best friend, she, she, me and her just, like, have the most amazing conversations that um, so sarcastic and, are, and, she, and she doesn't get offended easy. We send memes back, and I just laugh my ass off. I, and I and, and when I send something to her, I know she's laughing her ass off, too. You know, some stupid shit. It's just more fun to be able to send some type of visual of um, 
how I feel in the moment other than presenting it myself because maybe I'm not the most charismatic person. I'm not the most animated person. And maybe that's how I feel on the inside, but I make it come out with uh, uh, some depicted some type of um, gif or whatever and it just makes it even better then i can actually you know body language is huge so like it's just better than i can articulate it myself um and then also like you know grant with people's attention spans too you know um my attention span is dog shit I'm not gonna say and it's always been dog shit it's always been bad it's not because of tiktok and I, honestly i don't really spend that much time on tiktok i really don't spend so much time on shorts either i do sometimes and sometimes i find myself four hours into it but i don't spend a lot of time on it it's just it's always been like that my my attention span has always been short that's why i don't really like small talk is just so extremely boring to me and this is why when you watch my videos you can see me jump off from subject to, sh to subject is because i can't the way i am wired i can't just stick on one subject i get bored of it like I, the whole the whole point of this video is to talk about video games well look at how look where i transitioned to some some futuristic um type of talk that most people don't even think of um uh, my speculation of what will probably be coming down the pipe um so it's just people are becoming people aren't having as much relationships um i think there's going to be some type of new dating site that comes out that is wildly popular um i think that that dating site is going to be more oriented towards videos uh so you can actually see the person and in order to like swipe on them you have to maybe like pay some money or watch an ad so like if if you so you have to you have to at least watch like five seconds or something like that of their video talking about themselves instead of this like the the problem with 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 Tinder is you see one picture of somebody and you you don't take in any anything else besides just how they look it's just like less than a second nope nope nope. And for men, it's different than women. Women are attracted on a lot of different aspects than just pretty much men are very visual. So, like, we need some type of, we need some type of, somebody make, needs to make this where you still swipe left or right on people, but you have to watch the videos to, to a certain extent. You know, you know, like when you're watching YouTube and you have to, Watch that 10 seconds, and then after the 10 seconds or 5 seconds of that ad, you can skip it and go right to the video. Well, that's what we need, something like that. But like I said, if you pay for the app, then you can just go ahead and swipe. And, and, and there needs to be something, too, where it's not like when you swipe left on somebody, you can go back and, and, and you can re regenerate so you can, like, look through them again. And look through them because it's just like, you swipe on somebody and then that's it. Like, you know, you can't go back and maybe like relook at them. You know, I've heard of women that they've swiped so much on the left. They have nobody left to swipe on. So it's like you have to, you have to restart a new account. Um, yeah, the, the whole dating thing is, is just crazy. People, people are, are, um, they are having less. Uh, encounters sexually with each other. Um, I don't, I'm not really that motivated to date. I'm really not. And I used to be highly motivated, man. I used to like, and I still have my urges. I still have my urges. I still have the same urges I do for women that I have had before. I'm just not interested. I'm just like, it just seems so 
inauthentic. It seems so like well, first off, like on dating sites they're terrible, man. Like the I can't believe how many people smoke. I cannot believe it. Like why the hell do you smoke? It's crazy, like how man, so many people here in America just like they they the they're serious on there, and then they're they're not in good shape. They they you know and it, it's crazy. Like, except me for how I am. You're not even in good shape, and like most of the people on there, uh, probably probably men too. Probably men are trash on there too. It's not just both. It's not just one side. It's probably both sides. It's just people. Mm. I I remember like on MySpace, you could uh. You could you could go from like an age range of people, right? And you could do like a fifteen miles of somebody, or you know, three miles of where you're at. You can search race, you can search height, you can search all. There needs to be more of that, more selection of being able to search for people. Um, people are open to long distance. Who can possibly long distance relationships don't work, but if everyone in your area, like if you, I was thinking about moving to Alabama at one point and the area, like it's bad. Like where I'm at right now is bad too. So finding somebody that might actually fit your lifestyle, they might not live where you're at. And then you'll just have to meet them, come together. And like I said, long distance relationships don't work and possible. And, and in that type of situation, I wouldn't be like, oh, 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 we're both like uh, committed to each. I would, I, I don't, I don't really do long distance relationships. I used to when I was younger. I don't do them anymore. I won't do them more. It just kind of like get to know each, it, get to know each other, um, and you both have to like meet each other at some point, and and have some type of negotiation of like uh, if you're going to live by like because you're gonna want to see each other. Uh, it's, it's, it's really complicated. It's, um, like I said, people, people aren't, I, I just, man, I, like I said, I still, I'm very attracted to women. I'm, but just like, I'm seeing what's out there and I'm not no prize right now. I want to, I want to make myself a prize. I'm not right now. I have the time coming up to make myself a prize to get the last of the last of my life cleaned up. Um, get myself in great shape and get my money really well. Um, but it's just, yeah, I think that people are just going to are going to continue to separate. And the, and the demographics are going to get less and less. Um, and we're going to need AI to, in the future, produce for us. Now, will AI get rid of us? Possibly. I mean, if AI just looks at, you know, <laughs> how humans are to each other online, how hostile we are to each other, how mean we are to each other. It might just be like these people, this, this, this type of people needs to go. Um, who knows? It could set up different scenarios where it could take somebody out. Um, you know, like it knows when this person is going to go somewhere. It knows that this person is a bad person. He perceives it because of what they say online. And they know they're going to be at this point at this time. And then it just like takes a car and runs them over or something like that. But makes it look like an accident. Like AI is going to be ext way more smarter than we are, could ever get. The only way that we can even come close is implementing technology into our into our actual bodies 
Um, to even think about keeping up, that's the way Elon said. So, yeah, this video is long enough to take it easy.